We have a mystery on our hands. This week, the scholars this room are the crew of this mighty ship, the Envisioneer. While in search of an ancient treasure, we were marooned on an island in a key part of our navigation map went missing. Of the entire crew, we concerned four suspects. Today, you will hear the evidence collected against Dr. Smart and Shipwright Neff. Have you ever broken a bone in the woods or far from civilization? If so, you need to learn the more common emergency splints. The first splint is the figure of eight angle splint. First, you lay the splint flat and line it up with the back of the heel with the splint. Then pick up the side of the splint and wrap it around the ankle. Then shape it around the ankle snugly. Finally, sec finally secure the bandage. Well, you may be wondering what the figure of eight splint does. Well, it can help immobili immobilize the fracture or sprained ankle. The second and last splint is buddy taping. The, the steps to buddy taping are place a piece of gauze between the two injured fingers that will be taped together. This is this in which prevents friction between the fingers that could cause further injuries. Then wrap the fingers together with tape. Just don't tap your joints because if you do, it may cause further disturbance or damage to the skin. Well, those are some of the emergency splints that you may need to know in a serious moment. The lungs are one of the most important parts of your body because it allows you to breathe by giving you oxygen. When you bring, breathe in and out, your lungs expand. The lungs work by first you breathing in. The lungs quickly sort the oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen you breathe in. The lungs then send the oxygen into the blood while sending most of the nitrogen and carbon dioxide back out of the body. The lungs can sometimes spring a leak. This is referred to as a collapsed lung. A collapsed lung happens when a lung springs a leak. We created a model lung in class to explain how a lung works. The bottom balloon acts as the diaphragm, the chest cavity being the cup, the top balloon, and the lung, and the straw, the trachea. When you pull the bottom balloon or diaphragm, the trachea pulls in air and brings it to the lung, which expands. When you put a hole in the balloon, it represents the collapsed lung. This makes breathing, breathing harder and gasping for air more common. The treatments for this are needle or chest tube insertion, surgery, or observation. Needle or chest tube insertion is when you put pressure on the lungs with a tube, allowing it to expand properly. Surgery for a collapsed lung is as simple as closing it, closing the lung, and observation is when you only have a small por portion collapsed. The lung sucks back in the air and it solves itself. All you need are x-rays until it's done. Howard had made a map locating the missing envisioneers while we need to program our robot to find them. We discovered the location and it's Sydney and Neff. Only a robot could access this area. We need to avoid the obstacles the area has. A robotics team has made M-Bots to send to the dangerous island with snakes. It was inaccessible, that's why we sent robots to go find the crew members. There were way too many dangerous beings on that island. 
Here is our map script for our robot. This is used for finding our crewmates. Hi, our names are Maddie and Laterica. And hi, our names are Bruna and Karen. Today our presentation ha has been focused har has been focused on heart dissection and snake bites wounds. We need to figure out what snake bit first met young and what is happening to one of the other deckhands. He was feeling ha slightly fatigued and unable to work. Dr. Smart figured out that his problems were related to the cardiovascular system. Dr. Smart has provided us cow hearts to dissect to learn more. The, the heart has a few main parts that will mention the vena, the vena cava, the pulmonary, the pulmonary artery. Then the pulmonary veins and the aorta. The vena cava is the vein that carries blood from the body to the heart. The pulmonary artery is the artery that carries blood away from the to the lungs. The pulmonary, the pulmonary veins are the veins that carry blood from the lungs and back to the heart. The aorta is the artery that carries blood away from the heart and to the body. The exterior of the heart has the right ventricle, the coronary blood vessels, the left ventricle, and the apex. You'll also see the auricles, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, pulmonary vein, and pulmonary artery. The, the aorta too. On the interior, you'll find the left atrium, left ventricle, papillary muscle, right atrium, right ventricle, mitral valve, and Cupid valve. You can make two cuts into each side of the heart or one cut across the whole heart. That's mostly it for the heart dissection. Let's move on to the snake bite, bite wounds how, and how to treat them. First mate Sydney Young was bit by a snake. We must identify the snake in order to figure out the correct symptoms. Sydney recalls seeing a three-foot snake that was black with brown spots. She remembers being kidnapped by Neff. Dr. Smart believes a near-toxic snake bit her, which is leading to mild delusions. We must identify the symptoms to figure out if it was a neurotoxic or a hematoxic snake. This will help us figure out who stole the map, especially if Neff did kidnap her. That's a major clue. We learned about the King Cobra, the Malayan Pit Viper, Red-Tailed Green Rat, Snake, and Banded Crate. Some snakes are hemotoxic and some are neurotoxic. Neurotoxic affected the neurons and nerves in your brain paths. This leads to memory loss, brain damage, and more. Hematoxic affects the blood. It brings things like blood clots and damage to the circulatory system, which also brings damage to muscle tissue. This can cause paralysis, hemorrhage, and more. If you're bitten by a snake, you need to evacuate the area you were bitten. Remove all jewelry in the spot you were bitten. Example, remove any rings, bracelets, or etc. 
the area will swell and bring up chances of amputation by a lot if this isn't done. If so, call 911 as possible. Do not apply pressure to the wound or put the wound above the level of your heart. Doing this will make the blood rush to your heart. Do not chase or go after the snake. We've discovered it was m m the Malayan pit viper. The Malayan pit viper is around three feet long and has brown spots. It also matches all her symptoms. The Malayan the Malayan viper is hematoxic, which means Cindy wasn't delusional, which means Neff kidnapped her. From the blood drop analysis, I learned how to cooperate and how to work together. But the main reason we did the blood drop analysis is because of the captain's log. We had to drop the blood to figure out which height the blood was dropped from and figure out whose injury it was. And this is all because of the growing suspicions of the captain's missing treasure map. According to the captain, we needed to figure out whose blood was splattered and how high it was splattered from in order to figure out whose blood it was. We figured it out by dropping blood from different heights and then averaging it. Then we thought about where everybody's injuries were, if they were bending down, and compared it to the original blood drops. That's how we figured out who did the crime. The real question is who stole a part of the captain's map? Knowing that the experiment was so similar to what an actual CSI agent <laughs> would do to find out the victim was crazy. We needed to know whose blood drop it was for the captain's log by dropping the fake blood at different heights to see if everything connected and to see who actually committed the crime. The whole group collaborated to find out what pieces of clothing or tools belonged to who, and if it was close to the area of the crime scene. To help the captain with the investigation, we needed to measure blood drops. We did an experiment to help us measure the blood drops. To measure the, the drops, we measured the widest points. Using what we learned, we measured the blood at the scene of the crime and figured out whose blood it was. This was really helpful because it showed us what actual CSI agents do. There were three trials we had to do to find out whose blood it was. And each trial, we dropped blood from three different heights. And the first height was 12 inches, the second height was 30 inches, and the third height was 66 inches. Afterwards, we measured the drops to see how big they were. We did this experiment to see how dropping blood from different heights affects how it looks. What we learned from the CSI work it was that you can identify different substances by adding different liquids like iodine, water, or vinegar. For example, when you mix water and cornstarch, you get a substance that's a liquid and solid. Cornstarch is also used in something for the skin, which can be used to heal dry skin and sunburns. One person is always outside, Robert Neff. Maybe that's why the powder was at the crime scene. We also learned that fingerprints can help solve crimes. Like in the captain's log where we found the doctor's fingerprints which helped us find out who stole the map. We, we learned that to examine fingerprints we need a cup with the crew's fring, uh, fingerprints so we can put cocoa powder on it. Finally, we needed to put some tape on the cup then take it off and put a sheet of paper. This will make it more visible to analy analyze by doing the following. We can determine who was at the crime scene. Based on all the evidence our STEM group has pro submitted, we believe that Dr. Smart and Shipwright Neff are guilty of stealing the ancient map.